Hello, my name is Dr. Benjamin Lakin. I'm here at the Mount Tidy Observatory of the Canary Islands, one of the rare spots on Earth suited for making sensitive astronomical measurements. These sites are carefully chosen for a variety of factors that make it easier for the astronomers to see their objects here, an important one of which is how clean the air is. By that I mean the amount of aerosols that are in the air here. Now when I say aerosols, I'm not talking about the stuff that comes out of a spray can. For atmospheric scientists, aerosols are really small particles of liquid or solid matter suspended in the air. These can be anything from dust picked up by the wind to salt left behind for when the spray of breaking waves has evaporated. They can even grow in the air directly from trace gases that you can find everywhere. For Tosca, aerosols are interesting because it's been suggested that small changes in solar activity might alter the amount of aerosols in Earth's atmosphere. From up here, about three kilometers high, it's easy to look down and see a hazy layer in the lowest part of the atmosphere. This haze is actually an aerosol-rich soup we call the boundary layer, a soup that most people on Earth live and breathe in. It looks hazy as this is the aerosols interfering with visible light, scattering it around in all directions. But interfering with light is only one of aerosols' impacts. Aerosols are essential for the formation of clouds and rain. Cloud droplets form as water vapor condenses onto the surface of aerosols. As they continue to grow by this same process, they can become so large that they then fall as raindrops. Without aerosols, clouds and rain simply would not form in Earth's atmosphere. The proposed process linking solar activity to aerosols and clouds relates to the way in which the sun indirectly influences atmospheric electricity. At the moment, research groups around the world are studying this issue by looking at satellite and ground-based data, by creating complex computer models, and by building sensitive, elaborate experiments which can reproduce the conditions in Earth's atmosphere, experiments like the cloud chamber at CERN. Although it's certain that a link between the sun and clouds has no effect on global warming, there are still many open and interesting questions of research in this field, questions that can teach us new fundamental things about the way our atmosphere works and our link to space weather.